Hey guys! Hey guys, I'm Stephanie Weaver and welcome to my studio where I come to you every week where we can paint something fun and learn some practical applications to oil painting while we paint something that we actually enjoy. So, if you're new here, go ahead and click subscribe and so you don't miss a single thing and then we can actually get in touch with each other. Go ahead and click the newsletter in the comments below or in the description below and that way you can get to my latest and greatest every week as well. Now, if you are also new here, last week we started a painting. We started a sheet painting and we're going to continue on with that this week. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to paint. All right, so here we are. We have got this really pretty landscape that we're working on. And what uh, drew me to uh, this particular landscape was the light that was happening. So let's take a look at the reference photo here. So let's look at this reference photo. So if you were here last week, what you saw me say is basically it talks a little bit about a composition and why we're kind of moving things off. I simplified it, got rid of a couple sheep, and then I also um, made some artistic license in the background because uh, I can, you know, <laughs> so, and you can too. So like I kept it to just uh, five sheep here and because I thought that made for a better composition. Um, you can make it six, you can make it four, you can make it, you know, whatever you'd like there. So uh, we did get our first layer on it last week and we are gonna continue to add layers to this painting. So this week my intention is to gain a little bit more detail in the background while keeping it um, still in the distance. And then I want to start from the background and move forward. Um, so to start, because I am, this is my first painting of the day, I need to take some bold brush strokes uh, to kind of get into it. So I'm going to start definitely in the background, probably in my upper left sky area, uh, because it is a very loose area, it doesn't require a lot of details and that kind of helps us set the precedent for me. So, let's go ahead and mix some paint. I'm gonna go down my palette over here. I have my reference photo. I'm first gonna mix this paint that's in the background. Okay, I'm going to get my palette knife. So the colors that I see there is a little bit of the ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and some titanium white. So it's making it like a purpley haze is what I'm looking to do. Now, if you were able to save your paint from last week, that's fabulous. Um, you can save your paint each week by putting it into the freezer. Uh, I do paint almost every day. So I try and clean off my palette for you guys so it's less um, uh, busy. See how we're doing here. Oh, that's a pretty good match right there. Awesome. Okay. I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. There you go. So now you can see the the sky. So you can see this is a really good match. Okay. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and mix some of the the brownish color that I see behind the trees. And it doesn't really matter if I exactly match everything. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and orange, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and maybe just a touch of the blue. Uh, why those colors? Uh, those are the colors that I see that are in the background. You're going to see different colors than what I see. And so I want you to really kind of take a moment and evaluate what you see and then grab those colors. Um, in the paid for version of this video, uh, you actually receive a um, color mixing guide. So I show you all the color mixes that I make. And then you also um, has like a, you know, pictures along the process. So you kind of see everything that I've done. So um, if you're very uncertain about colors, I highly recommend that. 
and that way you can kind of see what I do. But really, I, I'll, I'll have to tell you this, the best method to learning colors is to actually paint almost every day. So, um, and that way you'll find what works and what doesn't work. Okay. All right. And I think I'm gonna, I'm going to turn on the light. Today it's actually cloudy outside, so the light in my studio is not as great as I would like it to be. So, making it hard to see for me, so I'm gonna turn this on. Sorry, there's a little glare there, but you can see my paint piles. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, okay, whatever. All right, um, and then also in the paid for version, you don't get all this. Oh, okay, whatever. You get the <laughs> condensed version of it. Okay, so I'm gonna make my greens too that I see in the background. So I grabbed a large bit of sap green, some ultramarine blue, Yeah, I think that's a good place to start. That'll make a really dark green. And from there, I can pull from my other color notes and just kind of play in it. Okay. Now, one thing that's in this uh, reference photo that I am also not going to do is I'm not going to add this little camera flash that's happening here. Um, that's a camera thing. I don't want that in there. So, okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to break up my bristles using my gamsaw. And you can decide if you want to use medium or not. Um, depends on how fast or easy the paint is moving for you. Um, I'm going to grab some Galkid. Galkid, just in case I need it. Galkid is a uh, medium that I use. This one right here. So um, it helps the paint move a little bit, and then it also helps um, it dry faster. And then it also has some stickiness, some high viscosity to it, so that the paint that I can apply on top of it will stick. So I'm just going to add a little bit. I don't use a lot of medium, because the oil paints already come with a medium and linseed oil in them. That is, depending on which kind of paints you use. I recommend the Gamblin products because of the uh, consistency of pigment and the high quality of pigment. All right, now I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna attack the background first. When I say attack, I am literally attacking it. So <laughs> I am Xing on my paint. And the beauty of having the underpainting blocked in with the color blocking is that I don't have to paint every single little piece. And I can choose to add in additional colors. Maybe I want a little bit blue, because what, what's going on in the background there is there's a mountain back there. That is obscured through the atmosphere. So I can kind of give a little bit of an illusion of that. Just by uh, gently kind of blocking in the colors and playing with those. I can grab a little bit from my other color notes as well. As things get closer to you, they do get more rich in color as things move into the distance, they white out a little bit. So as you can see, I created my initial pile of paint. And from there, I'm just kind of grabbing from all my standard palette to get a variation of color and just kind of what I see in the reference. So I'm going to put my reference photo right here, just like that. Now in the paid for version, what you'll see is the reference photo is going to be in the bottom right corner 
of this of the video so that way you can always kind of have a reference and see where I'm going with it So it grabs a little bit of that brownish color and I'm going to pull it up into the purple hazy mountains back in there. So that way it kind of looks like we've got some autumn trees way back there. Just adding lots of color variations in the background over here. I'm going to pull them in a little bit into everything else that's kind of going on. Mountain is getting very light blue, blue light bluish green as it kind of goes back into the distance. Now and then I just have to pick up a little bit of Galkin so that the paint moves a little bit more easily.
move a little more easy. Now as we get closer, things are going to get a little bit darker. So for that mix, I actually grabbed a little bit of this dark mix and some ultramarine blue and a lizard and crimson. And I actually need to lighten that up just a touch. I might grab some of this burnt mixture. There we go. see those are actually way more forward than what's kind of going in the background. smooth that area out just a little bit in here. The reason why I'm smoothing this down just a little bit is because I want the viewer's eye to first go to the sheet. And um, eyes are directed generally towards um, texture and light. So if there's a lot of texture kind of going on in the background there, the eye is going to be drawn there. I want it first going towards my sheet where I'm going to put a lot of texture and a lot of light into. And from there, I want it to walk around, I want the person's eye to walk around the painting. So I'm going to simplify this by just gently blending it in. Before I move on from this area, I'm going to lighten right in here because what I see in my reference photo, it's almost like there's a, a, a fog in that portion of the mountain. So I'm going to make a nice thin layer of white so right in here and I'm just kind of dabbling it in. Okay. And then I'm going to take my brush, my blending brush, and just gently blend that. Now next week I might accentuate that just a little bit more by glazing on another layer of white just so that I don't lose some of the details that are underneath it and it gets that foggy look. But by glazing it, it'll add in another more complex layer. Okay, I'm liking that area. I'm gonna to continue to play in those same colors and now I'm gonna go over to my right and work my way in because these trees and everything, they're, get, they're closer to us. So I'm still sticking with my background and playing in these colors. Now 
notice how I'm not covering up all of the orange in there? That is because I want some of that, the previous layers to shine through. So it looks like they're shadow trees or trees off in the distance that I didn't have to create. They're just there. So one of the things I'm also doing is I'm stepping back quite a bit and frequently because I'm trying to get a whole picture of what's happening here and because I want to make sure that there's balance in the composition. So um, I don't want you know one side to be particularly heavy on one color um, because I want this to be a soothing scene. I want it to be um, soft and um, I want the background to kind of be ethereal, just very soft and lost. It's, it's just part of the scene. It's not the scene. And so by stepping back quite frequently, I'm able to see the whole piece back there. And I am ignoring the front, the, the front portion right now because um, I'm just not to that portion because that's where we're going to get a little bit more into detail today. So I'm going to gently blend some of this. start thinking about moving forward. Um, one of the things that I'm going to start doing is in the background I can see some of the um, branches. So I'm going to start identifying where those branches are and that'll help me also relay kind of the story of where um, I want and we used to be a little bit more emphasized. Like right now, everything is very much like the shadow waves, like things in the background. So once I put in some of those details of where the branches are, then I can layer on top of those branches more leaves. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna be focus really on this darker color, which is the, the 
um, sap green and ultramarine blue, and I'm going to probably add a little bit of uh, burnt umber to it. So I'm going to pull some of this off to the side, and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to it. And just because we've got so many cool colors happening here, right? I'm going to throw in a little bit of warmth to that dark mix. I'm going to throw in a little bit of lizard and crimson. And you're probably not going to notice like a huge difference in the composition itself with the, the addition of that color. But there will be a difference just kind of in the mind's eye. I mean, nobody's going to be able to say, oh my god, that's a lizard and crimson. No, they're not going to be able to say that. But it's something that it does make a little bit of a difference. So I'm going to throw a little bit of that in. Okay. All right. Let me get a nice thin brush. What do I have? I need to get some new brushes, folks. I am beating the heck out of my brushes. Okay. decided on <laughs> the brush that I finally decided on is uh, it's a flat um, that way I can go and just kind of take the edge and I can choose whether I want the full edge like this or if I want a tail end or the side piece of the edge to kind of go off okay so I'm gonna wet my brush have a little bit of this now, if you dip your brush in a little bit of the lizard, um, Gamsol, which is my brush cleaner and thinner, don't use turpentine, um, I can thin the paint to where it actually extends longer. So let's see, I'm going to start over here. And notice what I did there. I'm touching this really, really light. So there's a gap right here where I didn't touch and complete the branch. That is totally fine because in reality, your eye is not gonna be able to see the total branches. There's gonna be division, there's gonna be all sorts of things happening. You know, the sky might kind of shine through in that particular area. And by doing that, I'm kind of essentially setting where the leaves should go. And some of these I'm going to set back just a little bit, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. this purple mixture to it to the dark what that's going to do is going to kind of subdue the branch and push it into the background sorry maybe I've got one back in here
I know a lot of painters, when they initially start, they want to start with all of this. And I actually discourage that instead of painting the, the colors that you see, because that's going to create those shadow um, trees in the background. And then in the middle ground of the background, we can <laughs> add in some more of this um, complexity and just kind of, you know, the trees kind of just playing back in there without. You don't want to thicken that one up just about a tiny bit. I started thinking a little bit too much about details right here. I'm going to push that back. This is a weird tree. <laughs> I meant to look that up between now and last time, but I didn't. If anybody knows what this tree is, please leave a comment. I would love to know what this tree is. It looks like some sort of evergreen, or it might be like, you know, a dead tree with lots of um, moss and stuff growing on it. See how this tree is coming forward now? And I'm starting to add actually leaves to it. And so it's pushing those other trees that we created back. Because this one is coming in front. So all these little branches and kind of weird looking leaves and stuff are coming, <laughs> coming in front of it. And we're going to place some more in that, make sure that we create that light, medium, dark. So we want it to make sure that where the light hits, the light hits, that it's going light, medium, dark, and it gives it shade. The other thing 
I'm doing here is I'm starting towards the tree branch, uh, towards the main tree, and I'm branching outward. And as I branch outward, it's picking up some of those lighter colors and then just kind of fading it in to the background almost. So that way it's just, almost, it's blending in, so to speak, with what everything else that's kind of going on. By mixing alizarin crimson, uh, sap green, and ultramarine blue, you're making a very nice rich uh, variation of black. So like in the middle, it's gonna be more intense in color. And remember, I wanted this particular one to be very dark because it's right above the sheet. And because it's gonna be a dark in contrast with the, the bright colored uh, white that's around the sheet, that's gonna make the sheet even come forward more, and that's what I want. I'm gonna even grab a little bit of black if I want to and add it to that mixture. As it goes up, I want it to go a little bit more out of focus and have some more of the, um, you know, haziness kind of added to it. So I'm going to add some of my light purple colors on top of the green to create that visual effect. And then I noticed in my reference image, as it goes up, it gets thinner. You know, it's a tree. So as it goes up, it gets thinner. So I'm gonna widen this just a little bit. And then I also noticed in my reference image that while I had like a straight line kind of going up, not necessarily a straight line, but one edge was relatively solid. It's not that way in the picture. So by just kind of breaking it up and going back and forth and breaking that up, and that's also making a light edge, and then I've got my dark in the middle, and then light on the other side. Because the light is actually coming from behind, so the darkest part will be in the middle of the tree, like right through here. So i got to keep that in mind too. So I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow ochre to my uh, blue-green mix here. And I can add some of that in too. I just kind of pop it in. And it's good to do this while it's still wet. So it's like light, medium, dark. It'll start blending in with each other. Now, if you are a slow painter, like I'm a, kind of a fast painter. I've been doing this for 20 something years. And so um, I'm a little bit of a fast painter. <laughs> so if you are, uh, you know, taking your time, please take your time. It is way better to uh, take your time, learn, and um, progress at your own pace, which is why I really encourage like the, to these videos that I do, that you do them over and over and over again. And the beauty of these things is you get to pause them. You don't have to like, actually paint every single step along with me. Instead, now you get to pause it, address your thoughts into the painting, and um, move forward with that. So, and then also if you are a, you know, taking your time um, and not, you know, necessarily taking the same level of strokes that I am where I'm like, do, 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 you know, <laughs> like I've had a ton of coffee, um, then uh, I would recommend a different medium. Like the one that I'm using, which is Galkid, is a fast drying medium. You might want to use um, uh, like Galkid Light or um, there's a slow dry medium, you might want to use one of those so that way you can get the same effects 
even tomorrow, like if you didn't get the light in like this, you can use the slow dry medium and a, a delay that has a speed of which it dries and then you can come back in here and achieve that light medium dark while playing with the same paint. So, um, there are, oil paints just have so much versatility and if you're used to acrylics where you dry fat, where everything dries fast, then use something like Galkin. And um, if you're used, if you want things to dry a little bit slow, use another medium that slow dries. It's uh, really up to you. You get to control all this stuff. And if you have questions about what medium to use, just pop it in the comments or go over to my Facebook page, which is um, uh, facebook.com forward slash Stephanie Weaver artist and leave me a question there. I'll be glad to help. That's my job is I get to help people find their creative, you know, <laughs> their, their creative abilities through oil painting. That's what I get to do now. Okay, so I know this is my darkest spot right in here. And as it gets darker, uh, as it gets closer to the ground, because there's gonna be less sun, light shining through that tree. So I'm gonna make sure that I kind of keep that in mind. It's gonna get darker as it goes into the depths of the forest. Yeah. And notice also, I'm not creating every single leaf. All I'm doing is using my brush stroke and just kind of dabbling it on there. Because remember, we want the details in the sheet. And I just find this tree kind of a little bit important to the story as well, because it's just so, it's such a different tree. Um, Go back and add some of my yellow ochre. Create some of those lights that are on top. I'm adding a little bit of this light purple mixture to it. I'm adding a little bit more variation of the light. I'm just softening that tree just a little tiny bit. Okay. I'm going to go back over in here and start adding some uh, indications of leaves on top of this tree. So using the orange that I colored, uh, created and using some of the orange that I created plus a little bit of this dark brown mix, I'm going to go in and add a little bit of light so I can kind of keep it nice and subdued. And go in here and just kind of start creating a little bit of illusions of closer trees and uh, leaves. Maybe it's coming up over this. And I'll do some back one here.
Add a little bit different color variation. Just by touching up in the sky, and that paint is still wet, it's kind of looking like the tree continues up in there, or there's trees in the background that are continuing up in there. Now, one of the comments or questions or you know, comments that I got last week was um, they didn't know how long this video would last. So that's kind of one of the challenges with uh, painting live is I don't know how long this is going to last. <laughs> but um, so if you're catching this after it's live, then you can actually see how long it's going to last and all that. Now in the professionally edited version of this, it's um, uh, broken down into bite-sized chunks so that you can actually, you know, take like six minutes to tone your canvas. You can take, you know, 45 minutes to whatever to work on your uh, sheet. So each one of those is broken down. The last video is actually broken down into six segments. So that's easy bite-sized chunks. And that way you can take it off, you know, bite off what you want to take at any given time. Cause like I said, I do break things down. Like I'm starting in the background then I'm gonna go foreground and then I'm gonna work on the details. So, and that's pretty much the way that I approach at least these first couple layers. So the videos, the professionally edited videos are broken down like that. Add a little bit of light down in here. Maybe the sun is kind of shining through and it's getting some of that stuff that's been in the background. So I'm using like um, the mixture of sap green and some white, just kind of touching some of this that might be in the background. And then I'm going to add some color variation up here. soften some of this. So all I'm doing is just using a dry brush and just kind of squiggling it in just with a little bit with the previously uh, wet paint. And this is a stylistic choice I think. You don't have to do this. I'm doing is I'm just kind of adding some darker areas into these leaves because everything was the same value 
And I don't want that. Darken up part of that tree right there. What I saw there was a little too hard of an edge, so I was just softening it up. As I remember, all this stuff is in the background. Okay. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of mess with this little area right over in here. Is creating some brushstroke variations. I don't know really what everything is back in there and it really doesn't matter because it's just some sort of trees and some sort of brush. And one thing I do know is I want it to be darker than what's going on with the sheep because the sheep are out in the sun. And I really should be using a bigger brush right now. I'm being a little bit lazy on my brush selection there. Just kind of sticking with one. Okay, here we go. This makes it a little more efficient. <laughs> I'm going to keep working towards my left. And then some of the light that's kind of happening behind here. And if I see any place that I might want to add that light again back into, I kind of add the little pops of light over in here. Kind of opens up that tree. I can do that now too. I'm going to work on this little tree back here. Again, I know the darkest spot. So he's got like a you know, the tree trunk right about here. And then it's got a lot of dark kind of happening around here. I'm going to add in some dark. And then he's got some dark underneath the tree branches. Okay. 
And I'm gonna create the light that's kind of around him, like the sun shining through. And I'm just grabbing some of the mix that I've made that's got the uh, the browns and the purples and just kind of dabbing it on there, creating that haze around it. Light tapping over, lightly tapping over some of the other colors that I've added in there. So that way it kind of blends a little bit more. Because you can't really tell what it is. Doing it in the background. We're just getting the mod uh, just adding in little spots of light. Okay, I'm gonna start adding in my greens. And I did save some of my greens from last week, so I'm gonna grab some of the lighter color greens and just mix it in a little bit with my dark there. And that was too light. Stick with my dark. That one is coming forward now too much compared to this one over here, so I need to set it back. One of the things I'm going to do to set it back a little bit is I'm going to add some of the blue uh, purple to portions of it. Just kind of tap it in. Okay, I'm going to continue to work on this little section. I'm just going to tap and stuff in. And I'm going to simplify it again because he's coming forward way more than this other tray right here. And I didn't want that. So, a couple things I'm going to do. One, is I'm gonna bring this tree back forward, uh, bring it forward by uh, overlaying some stuff on top of this tree. And this one, I'm gonna make sure I know that the middle is the darkest. And I don't want the whole thing bat lit, bat lit, back lit. <laughs> Never knew that was hard to say before. Okay. So let's bring this one on top. Kind of soften this one. Let 
this one forward. And I can tell this one's in front too, so that's good. We'll work on him next. So even if you deviated um, like from the trees, how things are laid out, um, always keep in mind which one is going to be in front of the other and where the light's coming from. That's going to tell you how to shape it, where to apply the light, and so on. So, um, yeah. Okay. Darken this one just a little bit more. It's also going to tell you whether you need to simplify the form by uh, blending it in. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to work on this one right here. Along the same lines, I'm first going to draw in the uh, tree stump, the branch. I'll get it right. I'm going to draw in <laughs> the um, tree trunk and get that in first. So it's just kind of doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh. So one of the things I do, I don't know how detailed this is really to show um, how I maneuver my brush strokes. So I actually started out wide down at the bottom here and then I moved it. So I just started wide. And then I start twisting my brush to bring it up. So even with the, the side branches and everything, I take it on my side here and I'm just pulling it out and lifting it off. And then so I can thicken that one. I'm just kind of outlining where I might want some tree branches to show. This one's going down past the hill and it's crooked. It's actually crooked in the picture too. These are weird trees. I like them. They're weird. I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush so I can get some smaller branches in there. Ah, that came on my brush. some gamsol to kind of thin the paint just a little bit so you can get longer extension of your branches with the paint Now I'm going to add in some of the trees, the tree leaves. Okay, starting with my dark again. And I'm going to start just kind of working in where I see blocks of color of tree leaves. And this one goes way out here way up there
My other thing to note is I only put my paint on like the first part of the paintbrush and that's so that ideally I don't get it up in the ferrule here and ruin my brushes. Um, and that way also if you notice I'm standing way back from my painting and if I just touch that part you know the paint's dripping uh, you know just placing on it so it's working without me having to go you know <laughs> get the sound effects in and it's actually a little less tiring um i think once we kind of get used to the movements um i'm just flicking my wrist and i'm just gently using my fingers to move the paintbrush instead of my whole arm going back and forth and back and forth like a uh, orchestra director. Small efficient movements. I'm going to go ahead and start. Well, I'm going to finish the top of the leaf. And if you remember, I'm going to have it go lighter as it gets up because the sun is catching more of it up top. So I'm going to grab some of the purple with the green and I'm going to start laying that in at the top. I'm going to start going a little bit lighter and adding in some of the I'm going to add in some of the yellow ochre to the green and start touching the tops of the tree branches. Notice how I'm not covering up all the background either. I'm leaving some of the background and the underpainting, I'm leaving some of that so it comes shining through. Um, Now, what I have going on here, I'm going to fix when I move to the foreground. Okay, what I'm seeing here, this tree is blending in with this tree. So I need to bring this tree forward because it's in front of this one so 
how I'm going to do that. What I notice in my picture is there's a little bit of atmosphere that's kind of happening here. I can add in that. So what I can do, let's just add in a little bit of something there. And then I'm going to pull it down. Now because I kind of introduced like a new color, I need to touch other places with that color. Okay. And I'm going to blend that in with this tree. So it sets him back. And then I'm going to come over this one with another branch. It's a constant dance, a little painting is. From the background, foreground, light, dark, you know. <laughs> Constantly moving. So for this one, I actually add a little bit of burnt sienna, uh, ultramarine blue, and my sap green. And burnt sienna is just going to give it a little bit of warmth in my dark so that it pulls forward. Warm pulls forward, cool sets back. So just adding that touch of warmth brought those forward. Now he's in front. Okay, now I need to add in a little bit more light to him. I don't know why the trees are a him, by the way. It's just a him. So, you know, I'm going <laughs> to add a little more light down here and um, to the tree. So, like, the sun is shining through. And that's also going to make him, see, I keep doing it, uh, come forward. Just like that. Okay. Let's see, this needs a little bit of sparkle over here. The sun is shining through. So the sparkle that I added, I'm gently mixing it in. It's uh, some of this purple and a little bit of the um, yellow ochre. You gotta be careful kind of how you mix that because sometimes it could dry down a little bit too much.
just going to soften some of this just a touch, creating a subtle difference between light, medium, and dark by gently blending it and removing a lot of the hard edges that I created using the stroke of my brush. Now, um, to balance it out a little bit, I'm going to add some of this color over in here and just add a little bit of, not necessarily texture, but a little bit of movement, um, unorchestrated movement, <laughs> that's what we'll call it. So back in here, a little more complexity than just my straight up and down lines that I had there before. some of that other color and just kind of put it right over in here just a little bit. I know my eye is going right for this point. That's because it's the right now the brightest point on here so I'm gonna kind of soften the edge just a little bit. I'm not ready to punch out the color just yet. The other thing I'm gonna do is just kind of add maybe a couple little you know shadow uh, branches back in there. Yeah just ever so slight. As I can see, lots of little shadow trees back in here, and I, I want the, that level of complexity happening back in here. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna grab, I've got a smaller brush. I'm just grabbing very lightly my um, dark reddish brown mix that I made. And I'm gonna add in just a couple little indications of the trees back in here. And I'm going to soften those two just a little bit.
I'm just going to soften some of those just by gently blending and creating soft edges. Darken this up down in here. Kind of set that back. Up from here, and to give the illusion of some more tree foliage. Okay, we've been going out just the background for the past hour and a half. And I think this is going to be a good stopping point and we can come back to it next week and we will move forward into the middle ground and get into our sheep as well. But I'm happy, I'm pleased with the background so far. But like you, I will also continue to critique my work over the next uh, week and just kind of figure out where I want to move next time. Maybe I want to enrich in some colors. And next week I can tell you, um, I probably will glaze on some more color into the background to really achieve some depth and movement. Um, and I'm also going to make sure that my trees are not equally spaced and maybe create some variation in there. Yeah, so like, I might introduce another tree or something, make sure that everything's not equally spaced. Okay, so um, I think that's it for today. We just worked on our background only, and we've added quite a bit of detail while trying to also keep it very um, subdued and not so much detail that when we get to our sheep it's going to compete with each other. We want the sheep to be the primary focus. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's um, oil painting session and come back for next week. Um, if you would like to send me pictures of your work I'd be glad to take a look at them. You can um, send them to stephanie at artforpause.com and that's stephanie at artforpause.com and I'll take a look at your pictures and provide some critique if you're looking for um, some critique and uh, feel free to pop any questions into this otherwise make sure you subscribe like the video and come back next week until then stay safe happy and healthy and happy painting <laughs>